I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Well, today I want to talk about a couple of medical parameters that you should do in your routine tests, whether you test yourself once a year. If you have a medical condition, all the more important to check these particular levels over and above the other levels that your doctor asks you to check. What we're learning in the world right now is there are so many people who hide behind science. I'm not saying science is bad. Science is needed. Science saves lives. But I think it's the stupidity of people when they don't use their common sense, when they don't use wisdom, when they don't use intuition in their lives. But most of them remain controlled by what science says or what science tells us is not possible. So if science tells a cancer patient that, hey, you're fourth stage and you're going to die in two weeks as per our scientific statistics, it doesn't mean you have to die in two weeks. Those are people who have died within two weeks, but there are so many, there are millions of people who have challenged that and are living for five, 10, 15 years post that scientific statistic. So like I said, use science the right way, but stop hiding behind it. For the longest time, people never realized the importance of vitamin D3 and even B12. We would have case after case of the deadliest of diseases of patients come to us with low D3 and low B12, never. Those patients were never medicated by their doctors. Most, I'm not here to bash doctors, I'm not here to generalize. I'm trying to show you the importance of maintaining vitamins in your body. If you have a vitamin D level in your report and a B12 and it's low, you need to fix it. If it's on the lower side of the range, it's your responsibility to say, what should I do to get it to the upper side of the range? Like a, like a normal vitamin D3 test will usually have a range of 30 to 100. Most people will be insufficient, that's a big problem. Or most people will be about 31 and 32 and they're happy with it. Why is the upper range 100? It's common sense that you would maintain levels at 60, 70 or even 80 or 90 for optimum health. You don't want to just maintain average levels. You don't want to maintain everything average in life because that's exactly what you'll be. Average everywhere. The same thing with B12. But today the world is screaming about the correlation of vitamin D3 with immunity. And now you can think about hundreds and thousands of patients who vi whose vitamin D3 was never fixed when they were going through cancer, when they were going through allergies, when they were going through cardiovascular problems, but we need a crisis and we need a couple of thousands of deaths to show us that vitamin D3 is important. So I'm reading out a couple of levels that you should check, irrespective. Vitamin D3 number one, vitamin B12. Today, science is showing us that low levels of B12 has every correlation, I'm not saying cause, correlation with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anything to do with the brain, cognitive brain disorders and all of that stuff. Vitamin B12, the function, any scientist, any nutritionist or any doctor should be telling you that vitamin B12 is required for neurological function. Your brain and every condition that occurs with your brain, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, memory loss, whatever it is, is neurological function. So how is it possible that people do not focus on vitamin B12 and they maintain low levels right through? In fact, it should become a mandatory test for every, every citizen to get their B12 and D3 tested. Guess why? Because if you have low levels and you fix those levels, you can prevent the onset of a lot of other ailments and conditions. But yep, there's a money trail. I think the way the world is right now, people have to fall sick to keep a well-oiled machinery of money working. But there have been science papers written on how the deficiency of one vitamin can lead to innumerable health problems. And by fixing that one vitamin, innumerable health problems can get better and better. But you see, you don't focus on the things that can actually solve or take away disease completely. You need to maintain chronic illness. People have to continue being sick in order for money to work. There is no money in being dead. There is no money in being healthy. All the money to be, ma be made is in maintaining illness. And look at the statistics, chronic illness, thyroid patients, diabetic patients, cardiovascular patients, cancer patients, chronic illness, they need a laundry list of medication to keep them alive. No one's talking about root causes. No one is talking about prevention. No one is talking about possible recovery because there is no money in that. Very, very, very few people. The system is flawed. It is not health care. It is sick care. And I don't say this with bitterness. I say this with assertiveness that you guys, all of us have to wake up and see through this. We need to see through this. 
Why do you need a pill to, that you need to take your entire lifetime to suppress your symptoms? You're still sick. Very few people need medication continuously because they genuinely have a problem. But when you have a lifestyle disorder, how is it that a medicine is just suppressing your symptom and not making you better? Because that's the way you're designed. Look at your blood parameters. Oh, my blood pressure levels are good. My blood sugar levels are good. You still have diabetes. You still have high blood pressure. You still have cardiovascular problems. You are still sick. I don't say this to demotivate you. I say it to motivate you in addressing your root cause, changing your lifestyle to make a difference. So check your vitamin D, check your B12. If it is low, question your doctor and tell them I need it to be fixed. So if you need to take a vitamin, make sure that you take a vitamin. Make sure you ask your doctor these questions because it is essential for you. If it was not essential, the test wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be a medical test. There wouldn't be vitamins for D3 and B12 that existed. Of course, there are natural sources as well that you get it for. But the fact that it's a medical test means it needs to be given importance. The same importance as other medical parameters. We have another test called CRP. That is your C-reactive protein. You can tell a hundred different things or more from CRP. CRP measures inflammation in the human body. If your CRP levels are high, you have to, you don't have to worry, but you have to know that there is inflammation in your body and you need to address it because you cannot live with continuous inflammation. Every lifestyle disease from cancer to diabetes to thyroid to cardiovascular are all categorized as inflammatory diseases created by constant inflammation in the body. So yes, you do want to know your CRP levels because you do want to know the extent of inflammation in your body so that you can do something about it. There may not be a medicine to treat CRP and that's why it's not given importance, but there is a lot that you can do with your lifestyle, your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, your emotional stress to reduce your CRP levels and live a healthier life. There's a test called the ATG, and this is your anti-thyroid globulin and your TPO, which is your uh, thyroid peroxidase. A lot of doctors scoff on this and they say it's a useless test. The question you need to ask them is then why is it a medical test? If you say it's useless, why is it on the medical portfolio for tests? If it's useless, okay, why does it exist? But you know what? There's no medicine to treat ATG and there's no medicine to treat TPO. It is only your lifestyle that can reduce your ATG and TPO. And guess what? Your ATG and TPO can tell you whether your thyroid condition is a Hashimoto's thyroid or a normal thyroid. Now, the medical world doesn't care about this. Guess why? It's the same medicine, whether you have a Hashimoto's or whether you have a thyroid. But guess what? There's a lot that you can do. If you have a Hashimoto's thyroid because you did your test of ATG and TPO and you found out that your thyroid is Hashimoto's, there's a massive chance of you reversing this and even getting off your medication with your doctors in the loop at some point. Because ATG and TPO tells us that you have an inflamed gut. It tells us that you have antibodies that are attacking your own thyroid gland. It is an autoimmune condition. Your immune system is excited. And if you relax your immune system, you relax the attack on your thyroid gland. And guess what? Your TSH, your T3, your T4, everything can get better. And your doctor can start weaning you off your medication from a higher dosage to a lower dosage and eventually even off. So yes, ATG and TPO is huge. It at least tells you that you have an autoimmune condition. There are so many people who start off with a Hashimoto's thyroid, they don't know it's autoimmune, and then it becomes a rheumatoid arthritis, then it becomes a psoriasis, it becomes an eczema. These are conditions of autoimmune. If you had addressed the root cause, and you had learned through your blood parameters that, yes, I have autoimmune, you can treat the body as a whole and prevent the onset of other autoimmune conditions, possibly arthritis, lupus, psoriasis, vitiligo, or everything. So you see, when you wanna only treat your symptoms and be happy, don't do these tests. If you wanna address the root cause and take control of your health and your life, it is unfortunately or fortunately necessary that you have to do these tests. Magnesium, so many conditions in the human body from cardiovascular to sleep disorders to everything has a deficiency of magnesium. 
If you don't know your magnesium levels, you can't treat it the right way. You can get magnesium from foods, you can get magnesium from vitamins. So many cancer patients, so many people with cardiovascular problems have literally negligible levels of magnesium. And that is probably one, one thing that they need to get better. So if you don't know, you can't treat it. So throw in magnesium in your test if you have all of these problems. And then you have your lipid profile. A lot of tests only do your total cholesterol. That is wrong. A lot of doctors today medicate you only on your total cholesterol. And it is inaccurate. It is inaccurate. You need to get a complete lipid profile that gives you your HDL, your LDL, and your triglycerides. Just being medicated on total cholesterol, I think one in three people would be on statins right now. But no, you're supposed to look at the breakup of your cholesterol. You gotta look at your HDL, your LDL, and triglycerides. There are so many patients out there whose triglyceride levels are perfect. Their HDL is perfect. Their LDL is a little bit high, and they're on a statin. That is ridiculous. You gotta look at the ratio. Now, you can't treat yourself unless you have the ratio. So make sure that when you do your medical test for cholesterol, you do not take medication for your cholesterol. You don't take a statin unless you see the breakup of it. Ask these questions to your doctor. Doc, my HDL is great. My triglycerides are fine. Why do I need a statin? My LDL is up. I can exercise, lose a little bit of weight and bring that down. I do not need a statin. I do not need a statin. You need to understand that statins are creating more damage than doing good. There's enough of science and medical literature out there. Go read it if you want. But a lot of people don't want to change their lifestyle. They want to continue eating crap, not exercising, being sleep deprived. So they take a statin thinking that, oh, my blood parameters, cholesterol is looking good. You still have a problem. Let's understand that. You have a suppressed symptom, but you still have a problem. And that problem is going to grow in different ways in your body with new side effects. It's as simple as that. Cardiovascular leads to diabetes. Diabetes and high blood pressure leads to kidney disease. They're going to give you medicines for all of these things. You might as well address the root cause at one time. The same thing with thyroid. Don't just look at your TSH levels. You also want to know your T3 and your T4. Your T3 and T4 conversion happens in the liver. You want to know this because it's necessary for your TSH. Sometimes your TSH is great, but you have a problem with your T3 and T4. So if you want to go on addressing your symptoms and staying in chronic illness, you can go on to that path. If you want to get onto the path of recovery, on the path of really addressing the root cause, because we all know that chronic sickness leads to more sickness. We all know that one medication will have a side effect that will lead to the start of a new condition in your body. So people who need it have to take it. But most people don't need it anymore. They need to address the root cause of their problem. And for that, we need data. We need to look into the body and figure out what's going wrong. So the next doctor who tells you ATG and TPO is useless, change your doctor right then. I'm telling you that. I have no disrespect. But a doctor who is not looking out for you completely, anything, a nutritionist who's not treating you holistically, and just treating a symptom and telling you cut out carbs to lose weight, go sugar free or cut out oil completely, do not consume oil, do not consume salt. Change these people because they are only treating your symptoms. You need to be treated as a whole, medically, nutritionally, exercise, anything. A, a trainer, personal trainer who doesn't care about your recovery, a personal trainer who you keep getting constantly injured with, you need to change them. Because your exercise is supposed to be making you stronger, not more and more injured. So you see, we have to be responsible and ask the right questions. These are tests that you must do. You must do if you are sick. You must do it once a year as a preventative measure to know what is happening in your body. I think through this virus, the world is now fed up. We are now fed up. Where is your science to save you from a simple virus? It's there. Science has screamed about immunity for the longest time, but no one, no one threw light on immunity. It had to bring a couple of thousands of deaths for us to realize that immunity is important. So don't hide behind science. Utilize science, consume it, but also use common sense. Ask the right questions. Understand there's something called intuition, gut, and wisdom. And wisdom. Today, I, I, I uh, published some statistics. It's on Instagram and Twitter. In 1980, there were 108 million diabetics. In 1980. In 2014, there were 420 million diabetics. In 1980, our lifestyles were different. 
We didn't have as much of junk food. We didn't have as much. People had to work more. People had to be more active. And then we moved to 2014. Along that came more medicine. We have more nutrition, more superfoods, more gyms. But the numbers of diabetics moved from 108 million to 420 million diabetics. Out of that in, 200, in 2016, 1.6 million people died of diabetes. Look at these numbers. Look at these numbers. 1.6 million deaths because of a lifestyle condition which was caused by poor lifestyle and no one focused on changing their lifestyle. We look for more medicine, but diabetes only grew more and more. Now you reflect on this and you ask yourself, where is the truth? Where is the truth? Stop hiding behind science and start using your common sense along with science. Stop being controlled by all the opinions you see out there. Everyone is unique. If you have a disease, it is your responsibility to address it. See the doctor, take the medicine, get your nutrition in place, but it is your responsibility to fix these things. So instead of whining and complaining about everything, it's about high time, people started taking accountability and responsibility for their own health. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.